Hey, Richard, how are you doing today? Hey, Mike, I'm doing pretty good. Just got back from a long week's vacation, and I want to thank the guys in development for holding the release for me until we could get back and, and do the, <laughs> the live stream. Uh, everybody knows I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think we'd have to get a riot on our hands if that was the case. <laughs> yeah, yep, I think so, too. Uh, anyway, it's great to be here, and, and welcome to all of our guests. Sebastian's here, and Lewis is here. Um, we expect a few more to join us here shortly, and we've got a lot of good stuff to look at today, huh? Absolutely, yeah. We got a ton of good stuff. I was looking through the comments here, and Sebastian, you know, said that you know it's going to be the longest live stream ever. He said, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll add as a comment right here. So, um, if you haven't seen Sebastian on the forums, he made a very, very cool post last week uh, with Toby and and Richard and Allness and, and myself. It was a great chat TPC generated. Uh, <laughs> thing. So take a look at that. Thanks for uh, bringing a smile to my day. Sebastian. Yep. Sebastian's becoming the master at, at uh, chat GPT. Lots of yep. great stuff in the forums. Absolutely. Um, and speaking of the forums, this was the, today's first comment. And I thought that was uh, that was a pretty good one. It's a banger. And that did not come from somebody over in the UK. Uh, that was actually our friend, uh, Mr. Rice at Kedgeshark. So. Very good. Very good. And uh, always good to have Lewis here. So nice to see you, Lewis. Nice to see you. All right. Well, we've got a worldwide audience today. Farid from Peru and 3D City from Argentina. That's just fantastic. Eduardo, of course. Argentina, Peru. Oh, my goodness. We got, you know, South America representing here. Yeah, we got the, we got the those... southern, southern, southern U.S. states there with Brian LaGrange. Indeed. Welcome, Brian. Welcome. Always nice to see you. All right. All right. Well, let's what? take a look at some of the cool stuff, Mike. Let's let's get into it. Let's I mean, get into it. Yep. yeah, let's uh, change my display to this right here. And uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of improvements. Yeah, in there really are. And some some really fun ones, too. Uh, you know, things that will certainly get me excited. So, yeah. And uh, Cody, Cody Armstrong, you know, the, the voice of on shape, you know, yeah. he's uh, uh, was able to uh, build the uh, the new release update uh, content here. So uh, it was nice to uh, to see Cody do that and uh, give me a break. No, <laughs> it was it was, uh, it, it was good, you know, and 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 I'm going to have some really genuine, like really genuine reactions here because I, I haven't touched a lot of these things at all. Right. Um, I, you know, I, I poked around a little bit today. I have to admit the first thing I looked at was the some 900 new uh, render uh, appearances and materials. Mm -hmm. uh, something that I certainly went in. Um, you know, we're going to get to some drawing drawing updates here. And while it may look like something very, uh, very small, it's huge for a lot of people. So um, when we get to that, I'll get all excited, too. Indeed. Uh, bonjour, uh, Benoit. Hi from Canada. And of course, John yeah, McClary. John McClary. Welcome, yeah. John. All right, let's let's uh, let's go into the first one, trim curve. So, uh, trim curve, you know, uh, good surfacing is built off of good curves. That's like the foundation of proper technical surfacing. You know, creating actual curves as the wireframe, if you will, right? If you were to really go back in the history of CAD, you know, you built wireframe models, <laughs> and you, then you quilted surfaces over them, you know, you'd create the the mesh surfaces. And, and that was like the, uh, the workflow. And, you know, of course, solid modeling became in vogue and solid modeling is just automating surface modeling, right. really, if, if it's, there is no solid model anywhere, <laughs> really, if you really think about it. It's, a, it's all a lie, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but it's all math. It's just math, right? So um, anyway, trim curve is great. And let's uh, let's show Cody's uh, element off. I do have this razor in case I want to pull it open here. But let's say we have these two surfaces that are intersecting. Right here, we have a curve down the middle. And trim curve is a new entity type that you can use. You can trim or extend physical curves of course curves are broken out as separate objects in the uh the list here at the bottom left um and this curve was here it may have been you know a, a curve that was 
in this case, you can see it was created by a composite curve. Yep. And then and they used to generate the, one of the surfaces there, it looks like. That's right. That's right. So we want to take it and then extend it, perhaps to close off this bottom area, maybe. I'm not sure. Let's. Uh, the help point is here to kind of give you the direction uh, uh, in which you want to work in. That's what the help point means. And you can use intelligent things like uh, up to entity if you wanted. Um, of course, curvature matching and tangency control, C2 um, and C1, you know, or G1, G2, whatever. I don't, what are you, Richard, in surfacing? Are you a G1 or a C1? <laughs> 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 I've heard both. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, Michael, and, and I think our listeners probably know this by now. I am a real newbie when it comes to surfacing. Um, and the more and more tools like this that, that get added into Onshape makes it easier for me. So, you know, when you ask me what kind of curves do I like the best, um, I like the ones best that my zebra stripes look great. You know what I mean? So I, I, I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the background to, to really understand all about curvature and C2 and G2 and F2 and F1 <laughs> and everything else. But what I can do is I can visualize, I can use the zebra stripes and I can use some of the other tools that are there to help me visualize if I've made the correct choices when I'm, when I'm doing some of this, these surfaces. So got it. Long answer to a short question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Here we go. Let's keep going with the curve. So we're going to give it the help point over here on, uh, you know, to kind of help us extend the, uh, the curve down in this direction up to that and through that point because we told it to extend by one inch but we could tell it to extrude up to an entity or even a mate connector implicitly defined on the fly of course it can to a mate connector mate connectors can do anything yeah they're the superhero of uh of reference geometry yep, right? they sure are yeah they i mean if if we were in the marvel universe it would be like thor level you know <laughs> yep, yep. you know of superhero you know that that's how important the mate connector is um, so yeah, the, the trim curve is going to be very useful for, for people involved with, you know, sophisticated surface design. Um, you know, it's really very good. Oh, and the, and here's a great comment. Yep. Yep. That was another one of the, uh, the very first comments this morning. So people are genuinely excited about this for sure. Absolutely. And we, uh, have the, uh, oh, down in, in India as well. Thank you for joining us, Matthew. No, hopefully I didn't mispronounce your name, uh, but like, I'm really, really excited to have this global audience today. It's really great. Um, so next is variables in sketch patterns. So we've had sketch patterns for a long time. Sure. We've yeah, had we've variables had... for a long time. Yep. Right. Uh, it's mad. You know, it was just a matter of time before they uh, started dating and getting together. Right. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, and, and it works out nice. So here we have this like uh, housing for a, uh, cordless drill or, or something like that. Um, and we want the venting in place here. And it, sometimes it makes a lot of sense to create a pattern, you know, in 2d and, uh, you know, just kind of use it as the yeah. basis of, of your geometry. So now of course we can you know, use all the power of variables in a sketch pattern and variables, you know, let me just pause this. It was a really quick video, but you can create variables on the fly now, right? You can say yeah. new variable, type in a hashtag, and you know it, it would it would create the variable on the fly. So this is a very good workflow. Um, you can do all sorts of stuff with variables, functions that you know if if you start typing into that empty box, you will find a list of all the functions up here, right there in front of you, right? So, um, you know, definitely take advantage of variables. And of course, the variable studio, which was released last year, right? You know, the variable studio would also interact with this as well. So if you had very complex, uh, you know, declarations of your design intent using variable studios, those could also be used in this. So simple improvement, but, you know, yeah, very powerful, very powerful. I, uh, I had the uh, I was fortunate uh, to work on some. Uh, you know, some things with Onshape uh, kind of playing around and I entered the uh, the render battle on the forums. That's right. And it was my first shot at using a bunch of variables. And Perfect. I learned a lot about them. And in fact, um, for those that are listening right now, we're going to be showing off some of these uh, 
Render Battle winners at a user group meeting uh, three weeks from today, I think. It's on uh, June 29th at noon Eastern, or 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Eastern, and it's going to be hosted by Michael Pascal. And uh, I'll be showing off my, uh, my winning entry, if you will, uh, and some of the things that I learned as I went through creating it. So if you're interested in... You know, especially if you're a beginner with variables and variable studio, um, you know, we'll be taking a look at that. So hope you'll join us. Great. Great. I will look forward to that and make sure to use those materials. That was big material libraries, right? <laughs> Which you'll see soon. So uh, more variables in sketch patterns. Uh, standard content metadata. I'm going to go live for this one. Um, let's uh, let's go live. So. This one is a big improvement, I think. This is like one of my uh, favorites. So let's go into something with some hardware in it. Let's see here. While you're doing that, our friend Poison Friend 450. That's quite a uh, quite a screen name there, but I love his comments. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I wonder if he's uh, running on shape on the Xbox there. I see the uh, Xbox logo. <laughs> anyway, maybe he'll let us know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so here we are. We have, uh, you know, a, you know, some hardware in here, right? You know, we have some socket okay. cap screws, you know, one of my favorite types of screws. Ah, mine too. Right. You know, let's look at the bill of materials for this. Um, and you notice there's no part number. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, there's no part number. Let's take care of that. Of course, Onshape has been able to create automatic part numbers if you're on the professional or enterprise plan you can just kind of right click and you know create a new uh part number uh for something right so right now you notice that you know i don't have that ability to add a part number to these uh right now of course i could type one in right yeah. and that would this is actually really cool i want to step back for a second because if you're in a company organization and you you know want people to be using the same hardware and, you know, everybody, you know, if we have a socketed cap screw, let's say it's M5 uh, right here, that's going to have a part number. And if I typed in that part number, everybody else in my company would also get that part number if I chose that same size material, you know, that you can see it's a stainless steel socketed cap screw. So it, it you know, it's unique by all this combination of configured data, right? Sure. Um, but, you know. It, you know, you don't have to worry about that when you have an on shape professional or enterprise company, it, it, the, the part number will come through and will be available for everybody. Now there's a new thing with the, the ability to kind of edit the metadata now behind this uh, stuff, right? So if we go in here, I have my professional account open. Uh, oh, that's my enterprise. Well, it's I'll, it's the same for professional yeah. if we look at this here. But if we go in here, you'll notice you have a new, you know, here is my my settings list, right? You know, my release management, applications. But here's my numbering schemes. It's a new, whole new field now. Uh, and this used to be the, you know, the, re, you know, part numbering was under release management, right? And it was down here with the revision scheme. But now it's been moved to a special place on its own so you can keep creating new types of part numbering, right? So right now I have part numbering based on parts, assemblies, drawings, and files. And you, know, you can see if it's a part, it gets a 100 dash. If it's an assembly, it gets a 500 dash. And if it's a drawing, it gets 800 dash. Now, very common, right? You've probably seen that out in the real world, Richard, sure. right? That type yeah. of scheme just as a serial number generator, not a quote unquote smart part number where you're describing the whole thing in a part number. You know, that's still you know, valid reason to do that, of course. But for, for most people, this is just fine. Now, we didn't have that for standard content, you know, but now we have it, right? So I'm going to call these out as 900s, and I want them to always be five digits long. And, you know, maybe I've used this scheme for a while now, but manually, and I'm up to 1,255, right? I've used 1,255 different combinations of hardware. So I guess I would say 1256 would be the next one. Um, so that is set now for everybody in my company. Now, if I go over here, let's uh, just close and open that again. 
and maybe I just need to uh, refresh it. And this this document might not have been upgraded yet too, so it you know it takes a couple days for that whole process to go. So if it doesn't show up here, but there it is. Okay, good. So generate part number. There we are. Right. Beautiful. And I could do the whole thing at once too. Bang. That was my next question. <laughs> yeah. So you can go to the column header and do it there. You can do it on. Uh, uh, you probably can't do it on release because it's not going to release um, hardware. You know, so you won't see hardware in your release candidates because it's a standard item, right? You're not going to rev control a socket in apps group. If you do and you need to make a cut to it, then you export it and you, you make yeah. it grown. Assign a new, it's, its own. It's a new part number. Yeah, yep. exactly. but these are the truly standard ones. So just like that, now I have part numbers completing, uh, completing the part numbers on those items. So that's yeah. really nice um, being able to have that right at my fingertips, right? And let's see if I was forgetting about anything if I look at Cody's video. You can do it on the, obviously right here on the fly when you uh, bring it in. Oh, in fact, let's let's show it this way. Um, escape out of that, go back over here. So we have M5 by 0.8, let's insert another one. So here's how you get to it, M5. You know, I'll get out of PEM and go to in or ain't like so. Bolts and screws, socketed screws, socketed cap screw, M5, um, just like that. Now here, here's the metadata properties window for that piece of content. This is also new, right? So I could change the description here. I could change the category. Wow. Okay. Now this is very important being able to change the category, especially if you connect with the arena PLM system, you know, it, everything needs to be categorized. So it knows what kind of part numbering system to get. Cause in, if you have the arena and on shape connection, you can have arena driving your part numbers to have even more sophisticated ways of delivering part numbers based on category. Um, but here, let you see how I have skew yep. that that's just a, uh, an alias that I use for part number, stock keeping unit, you know, the old SKU. Um, and if I hit that, there's the wow. 900, 1260. So I can get it from here too. Um, you know, there's my weight already here because I, you know, it's steel, Standard, yep. right? Um, so all this other stuff, like if I get this from McMaster car, you know, I could put it here, you know, it's a purchased component, right? So you can give it all this stuff now that you couldn't give before. Um, is it row house certified? I don't know. I mean, you can do all the stuff, right? So, um, that's because I've set it up that way in my system. You can see it's already filled that out. And if I insert that, you know, it will, uh, you know, have that. Yeah, here's the part number. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. So very happy about that. And the other thing, if, if you you're noticing here is items, what is an item? Do you know what items are Richard? No, Michael, tell me, what are items? <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so items are things that will appear in the bill of materials that you might not necessarily model. Things like grease. Grease, tape, glue, paint. Loctite. Uh, even things that you, maybe are spare parts, like you, a battery kit or, or things like that. You're not going to model a Duracell battery. Well, maybe you would. I don't know, but... <laughs> I would, I would, but <laughs> you're gonna do a fancy rendering. Of course you would. Of course. <laughs> um, but you see, if I hit this little, see if I zoom in right there, that little bin, yeah. like air parts bin, right? If I hit that, it's giving me my list of items, right? And I, you know, let's, uh, it's categorized, right? And we've had this for, for quite some time. Here's kits and like, here's that's, you know, I don't know if I need a uh, spare fastener kit for, well, let's do this. We're going uh, we're going to have a battery operated throttle. All right, here we go. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and let's not go there. Let's let's do uh, adhesives, Loctite on Yeah, let's do Loctite on each of the pieces of hardware. So guess what? I can establish it on those pieces of hardware, right? No way. Yeah. So I just selected all the hardware. Well, I don't need Loctite on a washer. Let's get rid of that. But on the screws, I do. And how many fluid ounces do I think I need? 
And that's defined in here, right? There we are. So now I've added Loctite to this. Loctite has its own part number that I've given it already. But, you know, it's it's already here, and it has a reference to, and if I hover over it in the bomb, look what it does. Wow. It even shows me, you know, all the places that I need Loctite very quickly and easily, right? Um, but the numbering scheme can also be set for items now as well. Wow. Right, so I'll just uh, go four, and we'll say you know, 65 is the next one. There we are. So now I have automatic item numbering, you know, when I'm uh, adding, you know, items that don't have a number. So if I go over here under, where do we have our item list? I am losing my mind. <laughs> moment. Gotta be there somewhere. Yeah, it's definitely in here somewhere. <laughs> Categories, custom properties. Where are you, items? Oh, right here, right in front of me. Oh, you mean the items? <laughs> <laughs> so here, I didn't see it either. <laughs> as an admin, you can see, you know, my list of items that I've yeah. created. You can import a CSV file, or you know, here's an export, you know, of it right there. I'll let that open up in some spreadsheet there. So. You can totally do this in a spreadsheet, export it, and then edit the spreadsheet and import a list in Beautiful. here. And we've had that for a while, or you can create them on the fly. Um, but of course, SKU is a number, so I'm going to call out. Um, I'm going to call this paint a uh, special paint, right? And it's an item category. Of course, we could have other types of item categories, and for the part number. There it is. I'll just get wow. it from there too. So, yeah, I can give it Rev A. It's a released object. So, yeah, I don't need to go through the whole yeah. process yeah. for these things. I'm going to order it in milliliters. Um, so, all this stuff you can, you know, set, right? And, you know, make active and just like that. So, now I have the special paint in here and I can use the special paint. There it is, special paint on that object right there. So pretty cool. Stuff, that yeah. Do that. yeah, it's uh it's really good. And that that sets up a lot of the things for that arena connection as well. Uh, so if you're an arena PLM customer, you know, this makes it easier to, you know, have that flow of information uh, work better. So yeah. um, it's really a fun, fun thing that that was added. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, hello, Frank from Peru. Nice to see you. All right, sketch fonts. All right, I'm going to have some fun with sketch fonts. <laughs> Let's show them. There they are. Baltazar. Oh, that one sounds great. Comic new. Oh, let's, we got to try a few of these. Okay, let's. Uh, yeah, and, and, and I want to check out Poppins too, by the way. So <laughs> it sounds very British. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> let's see here. Let's get my windows uh, arranged here in a way where I, we can keep track of stuff my uh, crazy mac uh windows management here. all right i think that should work all right i'm getting a little obsessive here okay there we go <laughs> all right let's go into a uh new part bet you're gonna make a rectangle and a block Ah, uh, maybe something like that. <laughs> maybe I'll make it round. There we go. <laughs> Less lines to draw. Uh, maybe it's like a, uh, I'm making a sundial or something. You know, yeah. get uh, you know, five millimeters thick. And uh, we'll look at this right here. And I will put some text in. All right. So now, of course, you know the list is a little nicer. All right. Let's see. New text options. All right, so that you know, of course, you can see the uh, you know how it would look, you know, yep. on the model, and then just the text, right? So let's let's cycle through here. Got a stencil option, right? So that that's kind of cool, right? Yeah. 
by the way, when you put these uh, text objects in, you can actually dimension them like real things. You know, want it to be a hundred millimeters wide, not you know some weird uh, you know, thing that you'd have in desktop publishing. <laughs> All right, so there we are. So there's new text options there, and then edit that. You just right click on it, edit text. There we are. That one's kind of a nice one. What's Baltazar? Oh, I like Baltazar. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, got that uh, little kind of an old fashioned look, you know? Yeah, like I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons time, or something. Reminds me of Times New Roman. Yeah, maybe it, maybe uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to go through every one, but that one's pretty cool. That's some trippy 70s stuff right there. Yep. Um, we got, uh, you know, nice. Courier Prime. What, what did you want to see? Poppins? Poppins. Let's see what that looks like. It totally, totally oh, British. Like, if it, let me extrude. This. Nice, beautiful block letters. Actually, let me use the scribe function. Have you ever used this, the, uh, the, the uh, what's that tool here? I think I know how to call it. Uh, wrap, transform, split, boolean. I'll just, you can wrap, you know, text along a curved surface as well, but I'll just do a split. We'll use that as the tool, that is the target. Oh, it's flat. I can't do that. Never mind. I'll just extrude it. I was overthinking things. Yeah, it does have that keep calm and carry on kind yeah. of yeah. <laughs> kind of feeling. You know, that that's uh that's what I'm seeing. Uh, comic Sans, I see Comic Sans being asked for. I think there was a comic one. I thought, yeah, I thought I saw something that yeah. so, resembled it. Yeah, you can't, like, we can't use the true type fonts, right? right? You know, that's the thing, right? So, you know, we're going to have one that's close to it. Um, uh, where was, there was Comic Nue. Let's see what that is. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's That's pretty close to Comic Sans, isn't it? How's that look, Sebastian? Yeah, you know, got the O's are slightly uh, askew. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little. <laughs> just that's askew. kind of. I think that's kind of clever, though. Yeah, <laughs> gives it some character. Exactly, close enough. Close enough. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Eduardo. Yeah, was, <laughs> wrapping is for cylindrical faces. That's 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 what I was getting wrong. Uh, let Let's just do one more quick check before. Uh, yeah, yeah. Everybody else obviously can do this too, but. Yeah. Um, Oh, I, I, I'm sitting here just wondering how many of our, our customers are sitting back right now going through every single one of those fonts to see if they like any of them better than the ones they're using. Yeah, this one's very uh, Terminator. Uh, Ooh, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, yeah, I like that one a lot. What's that? What was that one called? That one is called Microma. Ooh, Mike. Okay, that's going to be my new favorite font. I like while, this I one. It's yeah, very, uh, very nice. Yeah. By the way, you can flip it for molds and things like that too. So, you know, if you're molding that in or whatever, you know, you'd be able to have that. Reading upside down was a skill I acquired many, many years ago, and I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> Whole feature improvements. So, this one, very highly requested. Very highly requested. Uh, let's just uh, move that one to the trash and open up my uh, throttle again. All right. I like, yeah, I like the throttle for this. I think there's some holes in here that I could work with. Yeah. So let's uh, go into the editable version of it. This one's kind of an interesting uh, model, I think, because you have like, it's a casting, right? Yep. That's machined, right? So here's the, the casting. Yeah. That looks pretty good, right? Yep. Then you have your machined version with all the, uh, the cuts uh, in it. So Hole number three. Let's go into here. And let's see. Blind, blind. Oh, I, this document hasn't upgraded yet. Let's copy that one. <laughs> it, yeah, like I said, it takes a couple days for yeah. the system to upgrade all of the documents. But this should do the trick. All right. Let's try again.
uh, or I'll just put a new one in. Actually, let's just do that. Suppress this one right here. There we are. And I guess I'll suppress that other hole too. Sketch right there. Let's select other. Ah, oh, screw it. Let me just go. <laughs> All right, so simple. They're all blind and last. Counterbore. Let's pick a point. Oh, I hit the uh, icon. Merge scope goes into that. Start at sketch plane, hole type. So counterbore, let's pick a counterbore. Yeah, maybe maybe that one didn't upgrade yet either. Hold on. The perils and excitement <laughs> live demo without any practice. <laughs> All right. Bang, bang, bang. All right, let's put a whole. I'm going to show you a trick while I'm making something. I want four holes offset from the outside of this at 35 millimeters. Okay, So I create a sketch right there. And if I put a hole in, I can pick the sketch. You see what it did? Sweet. I've been picking the individual points. Yeah, you don't have to. And that will always stay up to date because it's going to pick all the vertex yep, yep. points nice. in the sketch, which is pretty cool. There's all the new entity types, right? So are. up to entity, up to next, blind and last. You also have a much more comprehensive set of, uh, of material uh, or uh, you know end conditions, right? So yep. up to entity, you know, pick a mate connector on the fly. And that, that's freaking power right there. Yep. Bam. I just told it to be halfway through the part by picking the mate connector on the fly. Do a section view. Tell it to go right up to there. Did you know you can drag and drop those points right on there? I do now. Michael, I'm learning all kinds of stuff from you today. <laughs> but there we are. That the you know, it's right there at the middle. And if I uh, go into this extrusion, let's hit the final button and uh, drag this upward, you can see the hole is staying. Nice. Huh. All right. Okay. So good stuff there. Yep, beautiful. And we're getting good comments from our poison friend. <laughs> All right, what's next? Join adjacent surfaces. So upon import, this looks like an import option. Yep. You'll find a new import option to join adjacent surfaces. This new option allows you to simplify imported parts with many. Oh, well, this is amazing. This is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody's gone through the uh, import of a bad IGES file with a thousand surfaces that you're trying yeah. to stitch together, and uh, this will just automatically join them, which is fantastic. I don't have a good demo model to show you on the fly. Um, perhaps a future. Yeah, I, I looked. I looked for one quickly this morning too, and couldn't come up with one that didn't work properly. So I do have a couple of imported parts in some of my documents but <laughs> they, they all worked out pretty good so excellent performance indicator improvements so you know if you well this is a 300 second rebuild my gosh that's a terrible part yeah it sure is <laughs> uh let's see new icons have been added to the performance panel to alert you okay so it's just going to give you some warnings here if there's something yeah. untoward going on here right you know you've yeah. created a feature that's like just going nuts on rebuild you know you've created a whatever it might be yeah. it's going to help you identify a problem right so you know right now there's no problems on this or any anything else in here it's giving me good uh stuff but you know obviously a high rebuild time like that yeah. is you know hopefully yeah, three, over 300 seconds i bet that yellow thing should be about 10 times as big <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think if you don't realize there's a problem gotta, yeah, but, yeah. but anyway if it, there's a certain threshold that it will be very helpful and, and okay. you'll see a little icon appear from what i believe 
in the list right here. And let, let's try to make it. I, I don't. I don't want to. Yeah, I'm not gonna try to make it happen. I mean, I could, I could make a huge pattern or something, but it's not worth the my the cost. <laughs> so, um, anyway, drawing improvements, Richard. Yeah. One drawing, one drawing improvement, and you know, a lot of folks will look at this and maybe roll their eyes and say, "Well, you know," but I'll tell you what: there's somebody in the forums that feels just like me, and says this is a fantastic change that all of the engineers at my company are celebrating. And it's a simple little change. It's being able to change the size of your, your, um, your leader, you know, the, uh, the leader offset there. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely. And it just kind of works nicely. You know, it's like a, uh, you know, if you look at it here, you know, we have yeah. this and maybe I just want to move it a little bit. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to change the angle of the leader. I just want to change the position of the text. Yep. And I mean, you know, <laughs> People that do drawings, a lot of folks that do drawings really want their drawings to 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 show, you know, their 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 talent and, and their uniqueness in some of these drawings. When, you know, with so many of these drawings look alike, there are certain things that you can do to make them your own. And part of that is having the flexibility in the standards to be able to do things like change the, the, the length there. Yeah, see that I was able to change that length very easily. Maybe I did it so that the geometric tolerance would fit under. Exactly. There, you know. There's, that, yep. There's many different reasons to do that, and uh, he did follow up with this uh, with this plea, if you will, uh, for our uh, on shape development folks. Please prioritize drawings above all else. <laughs> I don't think we'll get them to do that, but uh, drawings are always a priority here at Onshape. Yeah, it's all part of a healthy and complete breakfast. Yep. So, exactly. Um, you know, and that's uh, you know, yeah, drawings are important. Obviously, yep. but I, I like this, you know, being able to just uh, you know, change that length, move it over. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Let me snap this to that. Did you know you could snap? Uh, oh. That I did know. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Just, just, yeah. <laughs> I do, I do a lot of drawings. <laughs> <laughs> um, pretty nice looking drawing, huh? Yeah, that's yeah, it really the is. Painting drawing, and then here's the the casting drawing for that uh, throttle body. I, I like it. I think you can create a very nice artistic drawing in Odyssey. Oh, shape. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It really is uh, pretty nice. So, um, All right. What's next? Let's see. Let's slide over here. Slide over here. I like that nice responsive page. I might do it away from now on to keep the uh, yeah. thing here. So we already talked about the numbering schemes um, for items and standard content. And by the way, I have a, an enterprise, uh, hooked up to arena as well, just so you can see that if there's any arena, uh, customers on the call, um, this is what it would look like if you had uh, arena PLM hooked up, you know, you'd have a third choice, manual entry, sequential part number generation, or, uh, arena part number generation, right? So that's just, you know, that would be available for all of the, uh, choices, you know, for numbering schemes. Just want to make sure that's there. Oh, well, let me. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pop that up there just yet. That's all right. Uh, I didn't think I could override you on that. Uh, you have the power. Try, I was just trying to get it ready for the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. All right. So render studio stuff, new appearances. And then there's other, there's one other really majorly awesome thing that they added that like, I think is freaking amazing if I'm allowed to say that on a podcast. So, I think you are. And I think it's amazing as well. You're talking about the tessellation quality, right? Yeah. So I see two real, I see two really good things coming out of that. Number one, you want to do a quick render. So you, you know, you set your tessellations up to, to course or something, get something done quickly just to get, get a feel for it. But since it uses the tessellation of the parts into the render studio, you could create some really unique looking renders using the tessellation yeah yeah that's an interesting point i never thought about that that's a very uh, psychedelic way of thinking about it yeah um <laughs> <laughs> i mean so the the cool thing is right you know let me just uh, set this in perspective just so it kind of looks like it will when i am in render mode yeah that that kind of looks cool but i have a lot of round parts here and you know when you have a lot of round parts that takes a lot more tessellation yeah. right especially when yeah. you have other smaller detailed parts okay so Onshape has had this capability of, um, yeah, this this might let me go to the. 
actually, this might not be a good example because I have it spread across all these documents. So let, let me go to my coffee grinder because that also has some round stuff. Roundish. Roundish. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I've done renderings on it and stuff too. So, yeah, you know, maybe I want this part to have really good tessellation where the base doesn't really matter. And that I really care about this because it's a transparent part. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the transparency and the way the rendering works, you want to have good tessellation. So when you edit the appearance here, we've had this tessellation quality thing for a while. It's really an amazing thing because you can set that, you know, I'm going to set it coarse here just so you can see, yeah. you know, it'll, the, the base looks all, you know, yeah. you know, like straight lines almost. Right. Um, and you can make the cover, you know, fine, maybe, right? Yeah. Very fine. Very know. fine. Or even custom, you know, uh, well, not custom, but very fine. Yeah. Now, that, that'll give you a warning message saying, are you serious? You, know, but, <laughs> you really want to do yes. this? <laughs> uh, but we'll do fine on uh, the cover. So that way we can see the difference. By the way, in an assembly, you can, you know, of course, it's showing up at the assembly, right? It's a yeah. property of the part. Yeah. or subassembly. That's and, and that's what amazes me about this is you can actually change the tessellation per part in a part studio. Right. Exactly. That's cool stuff. Yeah. Or even in a bill of materials you can add, you know, the column for tessellation quality. I've renamed it display quality, but you can see there's coarse oh, right nice. there on that part, right? Yep. Um and it's using for the cover the cover did not update because I was using the released version right. of it. So it's right. not going to, you know, override that, but I could yeah. certainly update that reference to, uh, you know, the latest uh, main workspace, which will la allow me to change it now. And it would show me that it's uh, obviously fine. Right. Already, right. So you can change it from the bomb, which is good. So by the way, guess what? You can configure these things too. Like you could say, I want to have like, you know, checkbox for like uh, display low quality to improve performance or something. Right. Oh, and wow. I would be able to configure that. Well, I would have to have a configuration in the part two that set that. Right. And then do that. So that's all possible. So that's all amazing. And it gives you a whole new way of like configuring your model based on tessellation. This is all stuff we've had for a long yeah. time. Yeah. The thing is it will flow through to rendering now. Right. Right. So if I go to a render studio here and create a new scene, that assembly. Now, of course I could have that checkbox set if I had done all the setup there, but I'll just use the default, you know, which is one coarse part, one fine part and the rest are auto. Now I could say use tessellation quality for parts appearances, which I will do, and all the other yeah. parts it will just auto tessellate based on this thing. So now you can mix and match. Nice. This solves a huge amount of problems in in the world of rendering in general, industry wide. This is an issue, and I feel like this is a really good solution uh, for this because it, it really kind of well, it really helps. So. So now you can see that's kind of like tessellated low quality. This looks pretty good. Let's look at some of the new materials. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Where are the new materials? 900. Under, uh, v, materials V2, I believe. All the way down at the bottom of the list. Okay. Yep. There they are. Oh, yeah. There's, there's some new categories here. So let's... Uh, let's First place I went was car paint. Our paint. Car paint. Yep. Well, let's see. I, I remember we had some car paint before. Oh, that's a lot more. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we used to have like a few. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, now we have more. <laughs> yeah, I like this one. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a nice. Yeah, that's a nice. That's a nice. And then uh, let's do. Let's search for some sort of glass. Oh yeah, that's that's a lot more glass yeah. than used to be there. Assign that to that part. Wow. Yeah. And, then, and, that's, uh, and that's without even rendering it yet, you know? 
yeah, it's not not rendered yet. Let's uh this in a restaurant. And let's go full screen. We'll put this over here. Oh, flying off the table. There we are. Maybe I should zoom in here. Of course, I could change all these other scales. And this is kind of a low quality image behind here, actually. I really shouldn't use that. <laughs> uh, well, if we're going to be focusing on the uh, on the grinder there, then that's that's good to have that little fade in the background there. Yeah, yeah. But you can see the reflections are, are looking good yeah. and everything. But uh, you could have it reflect on the environment here. And I'll say uh, it's glossiness is a uh, thousand here. Shadow intensity of three or something. We'll uh, go to the uh, field of view. Well, no, not field of view. I want depth of field. There we are. Field of view, depth of field are pretty close to <laughs> think about. <laughs> there we are. Enable that. Yeah, I have a camera with a 1.8 lens with 11 blades and a 7.5 uh, degree rotation. And the focus distance, this is where I'm focusing right there. And uh, then I would actually render it, right? I would just, uh, of course, you would save your scene just to kind of give it a you know list of scenes. <laughs> we'll call it Hero 1. And uh, then you'd render it. And uh, we'll just do from, we'll do 16 by 9. Just uh, so it's set nice. Oh, I'm way up. I'm on my uh, non-advanced uh, account. <laughs> I was a ah. really high-res uh, thing here. So 1080, uh, 12, 480 by 720. Typical HD resolution, right? Yeah. yeah if you're going to put this on HD TV, it would look uh, good. So that's that's happening there. So you know, being able to set that part quality, you know, right here at the appearance level and have it ripple through is really good. Good for data management, um, and you can mix and match the two. It's uh, it's a very, very, very clever way of doing it. I think. And while you're uh, while we're waiting for that render, can I do a little bragging here? Go ahead. Yeah, let's let's see some more renders. Ta-da! So Richard won Render Battle 3. I got a whole two votes, but I got more thumbs up than the second place finisher did. And uh, these were my entries. It was a lot of fun. I think folks, more folks should be, be uh, entering these render battles. Michael Pasco does it on the forums. It's just, it's just for fun. There's no prizes. It's just uh, you get this nice little first place medal um, and, uh, and you get to show off some of your stuff. So a little context here that uh, that very simple part on the left is something that my father used to build for my brother and I when we were six and seven years old. And uh, all it is is two by fours, a piece of plywood, a couple of uh, eye bolts and four um, ball bearings. And we lived on a hill in San Francisco and uh, we used to ride that thing down the hill. And, uh, you know, of course, the ball bearings wear out uh, pretty quickly on concrete, but we had plenty of them to replace. So for my entry into the render battle, I decided to do a monster truck version uh, going back to um, and using my, my dad's, you know, same theme was to find things around the garage to build this thing. And uh, so it was a lot of fun putting together. It's a lot of fun participating in these things. And uh, folks, uh, get involved with that. I put the link to the uh, forum discussion in there. The next battle will be a little bit easier. Michael's talking about having some pre-done modeling uh, so that folks can just uh, focus on the rendering. Um, so get involved, check it out, have some fun. Nice. And we got a spelled out emoji. Sorry, the emoji didn't come through, <laughs> but I just wanted to make sure you saw it. <laughs> Congrats. Congrats. And John uh, almost killed himself with that, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the uh, the rendering there. So there it is. It took uh, about 40 yeah, seconds. Or so. Good stuff. But you can definitely see that car paint in there, like shiny and yep. smoothy. But yeah, it's a uh, very, very cool to have all those materials. I'll be spending some time uh, 
when I get a chance to do some rendering to, uh, yeah, between going through all of the fonts and all of the new, uh, new materials, uh, it's, you know, going to take a couple, three days. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. But I think that's, a, well, there are some other things just, just listen. I think check. we had something, some, uh, some new stuff with the arena connector. That's right. That's yeah. Some we, improvements did there. That. we did mention that. So yeah. Not only does the standard content part numbering work, but you know you'll be able to push the standard content. Yeah. And because it's special, standard content is a special thing in on shape; it's not like a regular part, so it needed a little extra. Yep. Oh, we got some great comments from from the team here, from all the on shapers. A lot of great comments. Oh, we got some new stuff here with uh, yep, Simon. Simon's, Simon's trying stuff out. Yeah, he's he and gets, reporting back. <laughs> that's right. We appreciate we appreciate yep. him greatly. Uh, and we appreciate all the folks that joined us here today. Um, I think this is one of our longest uh, longest live streams that we've had so far. Indeed. And I think maybe the most attended. So uh, you know, if you enjoy what you see here, tell your friends. Don't forget we do a uh, an actual podcast every two weeks. I uh, just dropped an episode last Thursday, and we'll be coming out with something new in a couple of weeks. So uh, hit the subscribe, hit the like. Tell us what you want to hear. You can always send us an email at innovatorsinsider at onshape.com exactly well i'm gonna stop sharing that and i think i think that's it i think, I think that's so, all too. that's at the print there's a couple of other things in there in the change log you know if you're a, a new user to onshape if anybody's curious about trying on shape uh in a uh, free plan or in a trial which gives you the private documents. There's some new content that's available now to help people uh, become productive and see best in best kind of in class built model kind of thing. So that's uh, that's there for some of the new users as well. So that that'll be updated uh, you know, next time you sign in. So a bunch of uh, other things behind the scenes for support and and help. You know when when people are you know, doing submission of a uh, circuit board uh, related objects, you know, that we've improved the experience there. So a bunch of stuff on the consumer or the customer support uh, okay. side. Yep. Check so, it all out. On yeah. shape is great. <laughs> it is. It is. And John, we, John, we saw your question about standard content, but you asked that question in the forums too. So let's let them answer it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a good point that you brought up, John. So uh, I'm, I'm sure we're looking at it right now to, to see if there's other, ways to uh to go through that issue you know with uh the standard content properties because it's a it's a good question and it needs uh addressing by the product team for sure <laughs> all, all right, right mate. good show buddy yeah it was a great show great show yeah, nice to see you good to have you back from vacation and Thank um you. good to be here i will see you around i'll be there all right take care yeah. everybody all right bye-bye